Hello, it's Sutonia here, and I want to talk a bit about the Cyclone in my most recent video, and do some commentary on a few Cyclone fights that I had. The fit I use uses 5 heavy assault missile launchers, a medium new, a small new, micro warp drive, web scram, adaptive invulnerability field, with an extra large ancillary shield booster. In the lows, I use 2 ballistic control units, damage control and 2 nanofibers, and I use cheap tech 1 resistant rigs for EM, kinetic and thermal. I recommend carrying standard blue pill and standard crash boosters, and I prefer to use two sets of light drones, five warriors and five acolytes, instead of five medium drones. So to go into a bit more depth with the cyclone fit that I used, probably the main difference between my cyclone fit and the other cyclones that I see is that I value speed a lot more. I like the two nanofibers on my cyclone because combined with a 3% implant to micro warp drive speed, this gives the cyclone almost 1.6 km a second with the micro warp drive on cold and 2.3 km a second while you're heating and you also have very similar agility to a combat cruiser. The other cyclone fits I see a lot more commonly are fits that are more favoured for brawling. There are single extra large ancillary shield fits, very similar to mine but with a co-processor and an extra ballistic control unit. And then there are dual extra large ancillary shield repair cyclones, although to fit this they need to sacrifice two rig slots and the nanofibers for fitting modules. And they have to choose between a web or an invulnerability field. I think the web is very important and if you sacrifice the invulnerability field and the two shield rigs you don't actually get that much tank for, than the single ancillary shield booster variant. The only real advantage is the ability to have one booster reloading while you're using the other one. Uh, these fits are better for brawling, but I don't believe battle cruisers like this are as viable in the current metagame anymore. And I think the cyclone fit that I use is well more adjusted to the metagame. We have two sets of light drones, a medium new, a small new, a scram and a web, and we have the speed and agility of a combat cruiser, so we're actually more than capable of uh, fighting in the current metagame. The Cyclone is a ship which can benefit heavily from force multipliers. Crystals, Siege and Skirmish links can improve it greatly, although I didn't use these in my video. But if you have them available and you want to use them, they can go great with the Cyclone. I do think though a lot of the charm from the Cyclone, in my opinion, is that without links, it's a, a lot of people really underestimate it. And battle cruisers as a class of ship right now are really undervalued and they are a little bit underpowered but the, the and the majority of them are unfavoured in the current meta. And I think the Cyclone itself is also underappreciated. And the way I use the Cyclone as more of a mobile brawler than a super active tank brick really surprises a lot of people. And you can get plenty of kills by being a lot more mobile than people would expect. I remember watching Kill 2 or CCP Rise's Ferox videos and commentary a long time ago. Back before Inferno when the ancillary, ancillary shield boosters were introduced. And a long time before the Battle Cruiser Tira side when the tier 1 battle cruisers were a lot worse than compared to the tier 2 battle cruisers than they are now. When he was a player and making solo PvP videos, one of the reasons why CCP Rise loved the Ferox was that it was a ship that was really underestimated and a lot of EVE, a lot of the EVE community thought it was complete trash, but it was maybe only 80% as good as a Brutix, which was a ship that people really respected. And it's kind of strange that that 20% difference means, means the... Uh, uh, changes the opinion between something being trash and being acknowledged as a really respected ship. And uh, I think the Cyclone in this fit is really capable and more than capable of going one versus one with most of the brawling heavy assault cruisers in the game and having a good chance of success. Maybe it's not quite on the same level as the Dymos, Vagabond or Sacrilege but it's, it's damn close I think and the Cyclone with insurance, implants, fit and boosters actually costs around 40 million isk for you to replace. So I think the Cyclone is very good for its value as it it's about four times cheap. You can lose four Cyclones for the cost of one Heavy Assault Cruiser, and you can lose about eight Cyclones for the cost of uh, one Pirate Faction Cruiser if you're talking about the more expensive ones like the Healer and the Orphrus. So the way you want to fly this Cyclone is that you want to be as efficient as possible with the ancillary charges as you can. We also want to give ourselves the best chance of a reload as possible, therefore we want to heat our inv invulnerability field for as much as possible, especially when the ancillary shield boost is reloading, as this improves our effective hit points. Um, we do some, There are some occasions where we do want to bait tank, but for the most part, we, since we only have a single ancillary shield booster, we don't want to bleed any armor or structure. We want to be at full HP with full armor, full structure, so then when our ancillary shield booster goes on reload, we have the most possible effective hit points that we can have. 
And uh, the Cyclone with a heated involve field at max shield, armor and structure HP has about 30,000 effective hit points against Omni damage. And what that means in ideal circumstances is that it'll take a bit more than 500 DPS to be able to kill you before your ancillary shield booster reloads. And hopefully during that time, when we had charges and also during the reload, we can remove enough DPS from the field to be able to get another reload. And keeping that 500 DPS number in your head is important, just so you, it can help you decide whether you want to try and uh, disengage if you still want to continue fighting. Since heating, the ancillary shield booster gives a bonus to the amount repaired. We want to ideally also heat the ancillary shield booster for every charge that we use in order to draw the maximum effectiveness from it. For boosters, I carry blue pill and crash. Both are very important to your ship. You want to, to take blue pill almost always to maximize the efficiency of your ancillary charges. It boosts shield boost amount by 20%, which is quite significant. It's almost always worth an extra 2 free ancillary charges in terms of rep amount. Uh, crash is a bit more situational. You should take crash if there are frigates on the field or destroyers on the field and it'll really help you with your application but don't take it unnecessarily because crash does have a chance of giving you, giving you a shield boost penalty which will negate your blue pill. Because this is the first fight I really want to talk about this versus uh, Saber 5 Slicers Griffin. So there was a Saber on the other side and there was also the Slicers on D-Scan when I jumped and there was a Griffin on this side when I jumped in and uh, I reapproached again. I know I need to kill this Saber um, first of all because it's the primary target. First of all, it's the slowest target on the field, and also Sabers normally have um, scrams or webs, so they can impact my mobility. And this is going to be a fight where mobility is going to be very important because I need to be able to catch the slicers to be able to threaten them and to uh, hopefully kill them as well. So I'm able to get on top of this slicer, uh, sorry, on top of this Saber, and you can see um, even though he's burning directly away from me, um, I'm able to sort of keep keep up with him with my micro drove on once I get the uh, overheated web even without overheating because I go almost 1.6 kilometers a second so even though the slicer is trying to burn away from me and run from me I'm still able to actually catch him um, the griffin decloaks now and I take my crash and my uh, blue peel here um, taking crash is very important in this fight obviously because there's six frigates and one destroyer hole and it's worth um, risking the shield boost penalty that I might get which I didn't actually get in this fight so the, the Griffin is my next target, um, mostly because it's the one that um, could probably have the biggest impact on this fight. If I get jammed to 20 seconds, then that's a lot of um, time where I can't do anything. And also because, I, because I'm against frigates, I have to spend another 7 or 8 seconds relocking them, which would take a long uh, time, which would take a long time and it would impact my DPS quite a lot. I'm able to kill the Griffin, and uh, one of the things that I'm quite bad at here is I don't have everything locked and I really should have everything on the field locked, there's no excuse really not to. I notice that one of the, the slicers is using keep at range I think because he's approaching me so I burn back towards the gate and uh, I, I'm trying to get on top of this slicer here. And you can see I haven't actually even started locking him yet which is really bad. Um, uh, I'm too used to using frigates which have uh, like three or four max lock targets. I normally just lock the priority targets. I really need to get used to locking more targets here. But you see, I am able to get a scram web on him. Um, he w was kind of not paying attention. I think he just had like keep it range on me or just orbit on me or something. And uh, this is sort of a testament to the Cyclone's mobility with two nanofibers is you can really catch people with their pants down. Um, I start heating my um, Anxiety Booster here. Um, I was debating whether or not to bait tank and take armor damage here against them because once I've killed this slicer then I can pretty much live to the, to the reload if something else does come but I, there is 47 people in local I only know where six of where I only know where seven of them are basically two of them are dead and then five slicers that are left on the field or well, actually four now sorry so potentially there could be a lot of people coming in that's why I decided not to bait tank in this instance and I'm able to catch just another slicer that was just not really paying attention, had MWD off, um, orbiting me, I think, just orbiting me at 17 or 18 kilometers or something like that. And once he dies, um, I know that um, I can guarantee that I can live through to the next reload because they won't have 500 DPS between them if they're not coming in close. And I think they realize that too and they all decide to bail. They don't know, they don't actually know that I only have one um, charge left in my booster. But not that that really matters because I could definitely um, live to the next reload. Okay, so this next fight is kind of interesting. Um, this is just after the hurricane kill in my video where I killed the uh, hurricane and the thrasher and the Ishtar and the rupture. Um, I don't kill. The Ishtar runs off and then the, the rupture burns away. 
Um, there was an Ishtar and Saber on the gate, on my out gate, and uh, I don't I don't actually know what else they have at this point. So uh, the Ishtar did cloak, so I decided to go in on the uh, on the Ishtar. Um, I noticed local went up by one and the Sabre decloaks. Um, the Sabre is probably going to be my primary target. I, I realised the Ishtar is very well tanked. Um, he actually has an invulnerability field effect going on. And I think he might actually have an explosive harden as well. I don't know if it's like an, if it's a ratting fit and he's trying to fight me in his PvE fit or something like that. But uh, a Griffin decloaks now and I get jammed. And I, I decided to burn away to try and burn off and warp away. But I get scrammed by the uh, Sabre. So I decided to maybe um, reapproach the gate, and I can diagro and jump. Um, the Griffin gets a second cycle off of me as well, so um, two cycles. And when I kill him and look at the fear, you actually see he actually has um, full Mimitar jammers. So he's actually able to keep me almost permanently jammed, like, despite me having 20 cents of strength uh, in the cycling fit. And you see here he gets the uh, third cycle. So right now I'm just I'm thinking just I'm just gonna diagro approach and jump back to the other side. Um, the Ishtar and the Sabre actually diagro at this point as well. Uh, so this is actually a good thing for me is trying maybe split them up over a gate. If I jump now, and then the Ishtar and Sabre fight me on the other side of the gate, then I can fight them two alone for a bit. But uh, what's kind of weird now is that everything starts to diagro. Um, the Maldiction Diagros, um, I believe the Ruptured Diagros as well, he's still um, red boxed on me, but I think that's because Artillery has a long cycle time. He's not actually doing any damage to me right now. And uh, I decided to maybe even try and get a reload on at this point, because uh, if they just, no one's going to do damage to me to try and force me through, then I might as well reload here. But um, the Griffin uh, right now, um, he actually Diagros as well, <laughs> which is kind of strange, and he un unlocks me, so I decided to just go in on him. Um, I've still got about 40 seconds left on my reload time for my Xenia Shield Booster, but removing the Griffin is the biggest obstacle, and I'm not actually too afraid of what's on the field right now. Um, the Ishtar was using Valkyrie 2s before. I believe he has bouncers, but he doesn't want to use them in this situation because I will probably be able to go under the tracking of the bouncers in my Cyclone. So I switch on to the uh, Sabre again because he aggresses again. Um, I believe the Ishtar is aggressed here, it's a bug with the overview. It shows him as yellow box, but he does have uh, Valkyrie 2s on me. Uh, so um, I'm shooting the Sabre right now, I'm shooting him with um, uh, EM missiles, which is probably not the best bet, but it's, I don't think it's worth me really reloading for the Sabre, because um, the EM missiles are going to be the best uh, missiles to shoot the Rupture with, and pretty good against the Maldiction as well. It's just, I don't want to reload to Kinetic to shoot the Sabre, because then uh, I'd have trouble breaking the Ishtar if I decide to go and go in on him. So I just um, uh, shoot the uh, saber with the uh, with the EM missiles, but that's fine. Um, I probably should have maybe switched to Warrior Twos because they might have been a bit more useful against him. Uh, I decided to go in on the Rupture next because I know he's in an artillery fit, so he's um, probably not going to have the best tank because artillery uses more resources to fit. And uh, I'm able to tackle him and go in on him. And uh, I've got a decent uh, ammo type loaded for him as well, the EM missiles. And my my Corp actually ends up burning out here. And this is one of the things that's really important about the Cyclone is heat management. And I probably should, shouldn't have used um, so many MWD heat cycles before, earlier when I was burning away from the fight or burning back in. Um, but I didn't really know uh, what was going to happen. So I'm able to take down this, uh, this rupture. And uh, it's kind of weird what's happened with his drones. I think they diagroed at some point, or he put his put the drones on something else. I don't really know what happened there, but there's only three of his Valkyrie twos on me at that point. But and now they're all on me. I don't know what he was doing really. Um, I was debating whether or not to continue or not, but local went up by one, and then um, you'll see again in in a second again. Local goes up by one again. I don't know what they're in. And the Maldiction left as well, so he could potentially be coming back. Um, the tower decloaks at this point, but I'm already warping off. I decided I'm going to warp to the outgate and see what else they have. And uh, it's not actually included in this video, but um, they actually have an Ishtar as well. So it's a good thing that I did decide to bail at that point. And I took a bit too much damage unnecessarily. Uh, I was in uh, half structure, so my chance of reliving for a reload are pretty slim. 
So this is a pretty interesting fight because there's a Nagulfa on the field. So I don't know what's really going on. Uh, I came back to that system to try and maybe fight them after I repaired. There was a wormhole to Ferro that was really close. So I went there and repaired and came back. And uh, I walked here and there's a... I think that they're shooting this... Um, Terra tool claim unit for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, but um, I was going to go for the Nemesis first. I know that the Nagalfar really cannot do anything to me as long as I'm um, pay attention to my traversal, as long as I'm uh, not at zero meters per second, as long as I'm not Nightmare X. Um, I should be pretty fu pretty fine, even though there is a Dreadnought on grid. So I decided to burn and catch this Ishtar, and uh, I orbit him 2500. Um, he does have Bouncer twos out initially. And I was able, if I get an orbit on him, I'd be able to mitigate all the DPS and uh, he actually recalls them as soon as I get on top of him. Um, I believe he tries to put out a different type of drone. I'm not sure what he's really doing right now because he's spending a lot of time doing it. But he actually puts out um, ECM drones instead, I believe. He doesn't actually put out any DPS drones on me. So it's actually just an Ishtar versus my um, uh, Cyclone at this point. The... The Ishtar is using Republic Fleet Balancers on me. I'm not sure if that's because he doesn't have the skills for Balancer 2s or not. But um, anyway, Republic Fleet Balancers, um, I, I'm pretty sure that I can live through a reload with just the Republic Fleet Balancers on me. Um, the Nemesis decloaks at this point and I try to lock him to put my drones on him and also just to burn him down because that's probably the most dangerous target to me. Because he's not only is he inc incredibly mobile, but... Um, if I'm tackled, then he can do about 600 DPS to me if he's in a decent fit with two ballistic control units. But he decides to bail, and the Nemesis actually plays very safe. Um, he always uh, cloaks up or runs away whenever I'm threatening him. So I go onto the Sabre next. The Sabre is the only thing on the field with a, with a point on me, and I already have modern uh, missiles loaded, so that's a, uh, a good thing for me. I'm on a reload here, and... Uh, Unfortunately, I was only at half shield and I wasn't heating my invulnerability field, so I actually lost quite a lot of effective hit points here, and that was a, a mistake from me. Um, and I'm actually heat. Uh, another thing about the uh, cyclones, heat management is very important. I'm actually heating the invulnerability field right now when it's completely unneeded to, and this burns out my web. And uh, this would probably cost me uh, later, as you'll see, but I don't ever tickle the uh, stab and then I decide to warp out because I wasn't going to live uh, with bouncers shooting me on my 3000 structure HP for uh, 30 seconds. Now, this is the final fight in my video. I came back and once I reloaded my ancillary shield booster and got my shields back up to full and I decided to go on the Nagafar just for lols really, just to try and prompt a a response from them. I was hoping that maybe the Ishtar would come back and I could um, fight and kill the the Ishtar. So I should really be using directional scanner at this point. There's no real excuse not to because I'm not taking any damage. There's nothing for me to do that's actually on the field. Um, I think it's <laughs> pretty, pretty stupid of me to have my nudes running on the Nagalfar because I'm losing my own capacitor here for really no reason because I'm at no point am I ever going to be able to kill the Nagafar. Maybe I should have put the small new on him just to sort of scare him a little bit into thinking that I might be able to take him down. Well, uh, anyway, a Maldiction comes in on me at this point and I switch to the Maldiction, obviously, because it's, it's got Scram and Tackle on me. Uh, you can see here what a difference the web makes, and because it, I don't have it, if you compare how quickly this Maldiction dies to how quickly the Slicers die in the uh, first fight I had, in the video and you can see just what a huge difference the web makes and that's one of the reasons why I don't like the dual ancillary rep uh, cyclone without the web because it just takes so long to kill interceptors in that fit I believe this is actually a, a 400 mm plate and um, tackle um, maldiction so it's a bit tanky but I would have been able to kill this maldiction quite easily if I did have the uh, if I did have the uh, web and I probably wouldn't have died at this point um, the Legion does tackle me. I've, I probably still would have died because the Legion did get tackle on me. He gets a scram and web on me. And I should have been checking directional scanner. If I would have been able to kill the Maldiction earlier, maybe I could have um, moved away or got out if I had the web. I'm mostly just including this just so uh, uh, you can see how important the web is. And the Maldiction actually ends up getting out at this point. Um, he ends up 
just burning away outside my scram range. I switched my nudes onto the legion and I reload to thermal. I was pretty sloppy with the reload though, I accidentally reloaded I think to um, uh, EM rage and I actually didn't have many missiles left of that category so I didn't have uh, many missiles so I decided to reload again so I wasted quite a lot of time. But I, I still would have died regardless but it just shows you how important the web is for the cyclone. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video.